Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our uh, discussion on our new hyperconverged data protection appliance ArcSERP N series. Um, we're still waiting for a few people. They're still trickling in, so we'll, we'll give it another 30 seconds to a minute before we uh, kick it off. All right, it's a minute past two, so we're going to kick it off. So thank you, everybody, for joining us here um, on this webinar today um, to discuss our uh, hyperconverged data appliance called our N-Series. Um, with me today, I have Mark Johnson, who's our Senior Director for Global Alliances. Um, he'll be leading the discussion today. Uh, my name is Will Worley. I'm on the channel marketing team. Um, and, and for those that registered, uh, please pay attention. So we have a nice giveaway uh, going on today at the end of the presentation. Uh, nice Traeger uh, pellet grill valued at $599, um, but there's a catch. You have to pay attention. Uh, let's listen. And at the end of the presentation, we're going to ask one question. And the first person to post the answer in the questions pane, which should be on your right-hand side, will win the Traeger grill. Uh, because we're at a giving mood, we're also going to do a second place prize of a $100 Amazon gift card. Um, so again, please pay, pay attention. And at the end of the presentation, we're going to ask one question. And the, the top two people that answer it correctly will win this gift. Um, if you already have a pellet grill, uh, we'll also do a gift card instead of the $599. So we'll determine that at the end of the presentation. And with that, I'll pass it on to Mark. And I'm guessing, Will, thank you very much. I'm guessing I'm not eligible for the grill because I kind of like it. No, started, not, unfortunately not. And I, I see a few Arksters here on the call as well. So sorry, guys. Um, this one's not for you, for, for partners only. Thanks, Will. Yep. So thank you. Uh, Will mentioned uh, my role here at Arkserve is to work with our OEM and Alliance partners. Obviously, uh, Nutanix is... Uh, one of our top alliance partners, as well as some, some of the cloud vendors out there, Amazon, Google, uh, Microsoft Azure, and then also other partners in the business, such as Sophos, and we'll talk about that a little bit as well. So as some of you may or may not know, um, a while back we, we had a merger, it was uh, ArcServe and uh, a company formerly known as StorageCraft, right? Um, and we brought the two companies together, and both companies kind of had our our niche or our segment in the marketplace. There wasn't a lot of overlap, but the best part was we created a very, very broad portfolio of data protection solutions for our customers in the market, right? If you look at um, StorageCraft's legacy, they really focused on the MSP space, right? Um, they had cust uh, products and services that were really focused around MSPs and MSPs, uh, those customers, right? If you look at the ArcServe legacy, obviously we, we started a while back. Um, our legacy was started in tape and now in you know, image-based backup and recovery, more to the uh, mid-market up into the enterprise space, right? So if you bring bring the two companies together, we have a very, very broad portfolio of solutions, right? And this is kind of the way that we look at our solutions and kind of um, map them to the markets that we service, right? So if you look at down in the lower left-hand corner of the of the picture here, the products that were traditional storage craft products today, or traditionally storage craft products that today really focus on the MSP space would be things like our OneSafe Solo, which is a uh, basically a storage gateway that allows um, backing up directly to the cloud from on-prem. Things like Shadow Safe and Shadow Protect, both of those solutions are focused for on MSPs, right? And the cloud services around those, being able to have MSP spin up um, workloads, customer workloads in the cloud, and be able to monitor and, and do things like chargeback and billing multi-tenancy, all the things that are important to our MSP customers. And if you look at those products are really focused around the small to mid-market space. Then we have solutions like our SaaS backup, which not only backs up um, you know, Office 365, 
but also things like um, GCP or excuse me, Google services, right? Google um, email, Google apps, and also things like um, Salesforce and um, Azure, Azure uh, AD, Dynamics, things like that. So very, very, uh, you know, complete solution around backing up um, SaaS-based, um, cloud-based solutions out there. And then we have our Cloud Direct solution, right, which uh, allows um, customers to back up directly from a node, server, or host directly to the cloud and be able to manage that. Um, you know, centrally in the cloud through a SaaS-based interface. We have a, a lot of customers using that, a lot of customers with a very distributed um, data environment. Maybe they might have hundreds of sites. It's all backed up to the cloud and managed centrally, right? And then if you look at, move up into the mid-market, into the enterprise space, you'll start to see products like our, obviously, our tape backup solution, our 9,000 series of, of UDP-based appliances that range from just a handful of terabytes all the way up to over 500 terabytes of capacity. Things like uh, cloud hybrid that allows us to replicate those UDP uh, backup um, copies up from whether it's an appliance or UDP software up into the cloud. And then our one safe immutable storage appliance, right? It's a, it's a scalable appliance that is uh, clusterable and allows our customers to be able to keep not only uh, replicas and snapshots of data, but also immutable storage, right? So when we talk about um, being able to recover from ransomware and the whole concept of 3211, as far as data protection, that last one there would be our immutable storage solution, the one safe. And then once we get up into the you know mid enterprise or above, we start things seeing things like continuous availability. We have customers who have um, you know, workloads that need continuous data protection and um, the ability to have always on availability. We can do that with our um, continuous availability suite. And then we start talking about our N series and our X series. And we're, we'll talk about the N series today. The X series is, is um, UDP appliances that are basically just kind of take over where the 9000 series ends and they go into, um, into up to three petabytes of capacity. So that's for really our, our largest customers out there. So if you look at the hierarchy of data, um, this was a slide that was just put together to talk about, you know, the obviously we all understand the um, how data is growing and, and customers are really trying to deal with explosive data growth. None of our customers get rid of data anymore. We know that um, it's kept for things like data warehousing and analytics and, and all those other things, whether it be compliance, legal, whatever. And they continue to make more and more copies of that data. I thought one of the interesting stats on this slide though was 90% of all the world's data has been produced in the last two years, right? And that trend is just gonna continue and continue and continue as the demands of uh, business you know, basically maintain that, hey, we, we need to keep all of our data to have be able to make intelligent decisions on on um, on our business. So if you look at the, the if you really break it down into um, a couple of the really the top line challenges that our customers have today, one would be what I like to call explosive data growth, right? And unpredictable data growth. I kind of map those two together. If you look at at, at all the data that's being creative, like we just talked about on that previous slide, and the business's need for keeping that data around, whether it's for analytics, whatever, compliance, things like G GDPR in, in, um, in Europe, right, or in uh, the EU, um, things like compliance in the US, things like HIPAA, all that data needs to be kept around, it needs to be protected, right? A lot of times the data growth is unpredictable. We often deal with customers who are in the throes of M&A, where they don't know how much data they're gonna have. Their data might double in the next 12 to 18 months. They're not 100% sure, right? But they need to be able to address that as well. So that's the first real challenge is that, is that data growth and the cost around maintaining that, obviously, and, and protecting it. The second would be cybersecurity, right? So how do you protect that data that's being backed up? You know, once you've backed it up, you put it in your data protection environment, how do you protect that data from ransomware? Because 
obviously you need that data around in the in the case of a ransomware attack you need to be able to recover from that backup data we hear horror stories about um, customers and companies out there that get hit with ransomware and they're not able to recover because their their data protection environment has been impacted right and that was one of the things we addressed with our relationship with Sophos and I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes but that's a huge challenge for customers right how do we keep that data protected and make sure that it's available um, and also you know think about what I talked about before about uh, our solution like continuous availability customers have to deal with multiple RTO and RPOs across different silos of data in their environment right um, how do they address that each one's different each one has different demands right so there's a, there's a lot of things that customers have to do as far as being able to recover that data and of course, lack of a recovery optimized system to support that resiliency, right? A lot of times customers back up all the data the same when the recovery methodology really needs to be addressed with the individual data silos in mind, right? The, the tiers of data or the tiers of workloads, right? All data is not created equal. So if you think about the complexity that this has brought to, you know, to data protection, think about, and you know, I've been in the industry a long time, close to 30 years, I hate to admit it, but you know, back when I was I started, it was kind of the tail end of the the, you know, the mainframe um, era, and client server computing was really starting to take hold, right? I mean, that's how that's it sounds old, but that's true. Um, and it was pretty easy to back up your data back then. You knew where it was. It was all pretty much in the same format on the same platform. And um, it wasn't too hard to wrangle that data, right? But think about now, think about the inf infrastructures that customers deal with, right? Multiple computing platforms, different kinds of workloads and applications. Think about where the data resides, right? It resides on different tiers of storage. It could be in the cloud. It, it could be in a remote location. It could be on your uh, employees, you know, laptops. It could be in a SaaS solution. Um, so it's, it, you know, the, the complexity that has overtaken the uh, the IT space is really uh, a challenge uh, around data protection for most of our customers, right? Think about the processes that are um, required to protect this data, right? Multiple processes, um, a lot of increased overhead, a lot of increased cost, right? Like I said, different types of data has different requirements, and each one of those requirements requires a process around it. And people, right? As the data continues to grow, um, individuals in the in the IT organization can only manage so much data at a time, right? Even with the best tools out there, even with um, the best processes, just the more data that's protected, the more individuals that are required from an IT perspective. And obviously, we we all know that IT budgets are unlimited. You just can't continue to hire more and more people. So. We need to have better tools out there, and our our customers need better tools to uh, base, basically manage that environment. So think about the challenge, right? As a data protection solution, we deal with everything that is in the IT environment, right? We have to we have to make sure that we're compatible with the compute environment. We have to make sure that we are compatible with networking. We have to be able to address all the different storage um, platforms. In that environment, right? We have a backup solution that runs. And if you think about most customers, they might have more than one backup solution. They might have three or four different backup solutions running, depending on the capabilities of those solutions and the types of things that they back up, right? Whether it's whether it's legacy uh, solutions, legacy OSs, different types of hardware and software, they might have to have multiple solutions to do that. You, you've got a primary backup target, and you may even have a secondary backup target, dep depending on the RPOs and RTOs required to be able to recover, right? And then you've got archival storage, right? And that may include cloud, it could include off-prem, it could include removable media, things like tape or removable hard drives, right? And it all comes down to, you know, a few things here multiple data silos to manage where are those silos like i said they could be in the cloud they could be multiple silos on prem they could be in a remote location it's really hard to gain insight into that secondary data 
I think a lot of our customers do a great job of managing their storage, managing the actual data and knowing what's being backed up exactly is kind of a is kind of a tough thing, right? And if you don't know exactly what's sitting on that uh, on that storage array or what's sitting on that uh, server or what's behind that VM, if you don't know exactly what it is, you got to back it up, right? You can't take the risk or you can't you know, expose yourself to not to not backing it up. So again, the demands of the business continue to increase and, and, and contribute to that explo explosive growth around, around data, right? So management becomes problematic. And going back to what I talked about before, if a customer has two or three or four different backup solutions or data protection solutions out there, that creates overhead, right? It creates overhead from a training perspective, a licensing perspective, all those things, and it all contributes to co increased cost. So one of the things that, um, you know, where when I start talking about hyperconverged and our partner in Nutanix, think about what virtualization did to the IT environment, right? It kind of, I think of it almost as a full circle. I think of virtualization as almost going back to the days of the mainframe where everything was managed from central location, even though, you know, in a virtualized environment, you may have disparate servers or pieces of hardware or whatever in different networks, all these things, but it was all it was all made to be managed from a central location, right? But as that virtualized environment grew, um, it became a little less manageable. So so enter the hyperconverged architecture space, like and obviously Nutanix was a leader in that space, right? What if you could take that entire virtualization environment and virtualize it at the very top? Right? So now all of your hosts, all of your network, all your storage systems, they become totally virtualized, right? Much easier to manage, much cheaper to manage. You can manage it with fewer individuals and it becomes a lot more cost effective for your organization, much better use of uh, resources, right? Better utilization of those resources. But what if, what if we could take and take that concept of hyperconverge and apply it to the data protection environment, right? Which is what Nutanix really did. Nutanix created what they call their objects platform, right? So if, if you think about virtualizing all the things that are inside of a data protection environment, you know, the server itself, the data movers, the backup server, things like the storage controllers, the network, maybe a tape controller, right? The ability to write to tape and put on, to, you know, put that all on top of an object-based storage environment, that's what Nutanix did. They created their Nutanix objects platform, okay? So the end series, which we'll dig into a little bit deeper here in a couple slides or the next slide, we basically built a data protection solution appliance on top of Nutanix objects, right? So what we've done is the, the underlying um, infrastructure of our appliance is Nutanix objects. And if you look at our, our boxes today, right in the front, it's an ArcServe solution, obviously, right? But it's powered by Nutanix and secured by Sophos. So what does that mean? It's basically a Nutanix objects, infinitely scalable, or what they like to call cloud-like scalability platform, running our award-winning ArcServe UDP data protection software solution secured by Sophos. So we're running Sophos Intercept X to basically protect the data protection solution, lock it down and make it, um, you know, impenetrable to ransomware. So we've kind of taken three products here and created really what is a, a robust solution, right? The scalability of Nutanix objects, the proactive protection from ransomware with Intercept X. So, and, and I like to say proactive because we're not monitoring the data here, looking for possible anomalies in the metadata or things like that. We're actually running Intercept X to lock down the data protection environment itself so that it's not impacted by ransomware, right? So the, in the event of a ransomware attack, the data protection solution will be available for recovery to be able to recover that data, right? We also can leverage immutable storage with Nutanix object what they call their object lock, right, on the data on the data store. So Nutanix is um, th their object-based platform is basically S3 S3 compliant, 
you know, it's AWS S3 compliant object storage. And they have a, you know, a, a mutable storage solution, very, very similar to AWS Object Lock, right? So it gives our customers the ability to actually use immutable storage on the appliance. So if you think about the components here, let's, let's start with UDP. So obviously a lot of our customers and a lot of our partners are familiar with UDP, right? So all the robustness of UDP and the capabilities of UDP are running on the box. So not only data protection for, um, you know, Nutanix AHV, but things like uh, Windows, Linux, Hyper-V, VMware, right? We can obviously protect Nutanix objects and files. We still have the ability to do any-to-any -any recovery, right? Physical to virtual, virtual to virtual, cross hypervisor support. Um, we can do the, you can still do the DR testing with assured recovery. And because we can back up and recover from one hypervisor to another, uh, we can actually back up from a, another host, whether it be VMware or Hyper-V, and we can recover to Nutanix. So it, it really is a way for um, our customers to migrate workloads from um, you know, another hypervisor to Nutanix if they wish, right? The one thing to remember about the, the, the N-Series appliance, it's, it's, not, it, it's designed to back up the entire data center, not just Nutanix workloads, right? So if, you ha if a customer has physical, virtual workloads, cloud workloads, whatever, we can back those up as well because if you if you talk to Nutanix and you talk to Nutanix customers out there in the marketplace, there's very few of those customers that are 100% Nutanix, right? They might have a predominant um, the predominant you know um, platform in their data center maybe Nutanix, but they still have some some standalone workloads running on standalone servers maybe or blades. They may have a VMware or Hyper-V development environment right, on the side that they that they need protected, or they may have some cloud uh, workloads they want protected as well. So we can we can do all of that with the N-Series box, right? And the great thing is, in a Nutanix environment, if customers running Nutanix for their um, their infrastructure, the box um, the the, the um, solution is is fully uh, manageable through Nutanix Prism, which is their top line uh, management interface, right? And again, the same types of workflow. Workflows apply for HV, VMware, and Hyper-V. Hey, so uh, hey, Mark, yeah. just a quick question. Um, what a uh, question came up. Do to to leverage this appliance? Do you have to be a Nutanix partner or customer to to sell this? Do you have to be authorized? Um, can you touch on that for us? So the great part is for our partners out there is that this is an ArcServe SKU. Right, and we'll, we'll, I'll I'll go into this a little deeper towards the end of this, the presentation. But this is an ArcServe solution. It's an ArcServe SKU. It's sold on a single SKU. Right, the the um, entire solution, hardware, software, everything sold on a single ArcServe SKU. So you do not need to be a Nutanix certified reseller or anything to sell the solution. If you're an ArcServe reseller, you can sell the solution. Does that answer the question? I hope yep. so. Nope. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Well, appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. So think about now we've taken our you know our award-winning UDP software and we've loaded it on top of Nutanix as the Nutanix objects as the infrastructure. And why do we do that? First thing is we're going to address that that explosive data growth, right? The Nutanix uh, infrastructure is virtually unlimited scalability. They like to call it cloud-like scalability. Hundreds of nodes per cluster, right? With, 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 with no impact to performance. So it, it really helps our customers address that explosive data growth. And I like to call it, you know, scale as you grow or pay as you grow, right? Um, you don't have to replace anything, you know, it, in a typical backup and recovery, appliance, once you outgrow the appliance, you um, buy a bigger box, right? The thing with the N-Series is once you start to outgrow the storage, you just buy another storage node and continue to add to that cluster. And again, it's all managed. It's all managed through Prism, right? And again, the performance is at scale, right? So as you grow and you add more storage, it doesn't impact the performance whatsoever, right? 
you still get the same kind of um, re cloud-like resiliency, right? You get all the other things that we have, all the other advantages. We have things like um, data encryption at rest, data encryption at in flight between um, our proxies and our um, agents, you know, to the actual end series itself. Um, and we still do data, do data deduplication as, um, you know, as we would with UDP software or any of our 9000 series or X series appliances. So you do get the advantage of, of um, storage reduction, re storage requirement reduction through deduplication. Hey, Mark, um, another, go ahead. sorry, Mark. Go ahead. Uh, no, another quick question is uh, from, from the deduplication standpoint, is it inline or is it software based? How are we, how are we doing the dedupe? We're doing it inline, right? Okay. So it's, it, it's, it's um, source based and then global, right? And we do it inline. So we're writing deduplicated data on the fly, right? There is no, there is no, um, you know, I like to call it parking lot volume, right? Where we're writing data to it and then post processing it. We don't do that. We do it inline and we do it um, so at the source and then globally across all the recovery points in the data store, okay? So we are really getting uh, maximum uh, optimization of that storage. And again, we have worm, worm capabilities or immutable storage capabilities um, using those um, S3 APIs that uh, Nutanix leverages as well. And then, so now we have UDP on top of a robust um, architecture, and now we've added Sophos to that, right? And one of the reasons, and we've had this relationship with Sophos for uh, going on, I think a little over three years, right? We started with, um, by integrating Sophos onto our, I think it was our 8,000 series appliances a while back. Now it's on the 9,000 series, it's on the X series, it's on the N series. And also um, we include a copy of Intercept X with all of our UDP software licenses as well. Go ahead, Will. Awesome. Sorry, Mark. Um, I, I think I know the answer to this, but um, I, as you go through, uh, we have a question. Do you have to use Nutanix storage to use this solution? Can a customer that has Windows Linux servers use this solution? I assume that would be more of the Appliance 9000 and X series, but I'll let you kind of answer that question. Say the, say the question again. I'm sorry. I guess Can I a customer first. that has Windows Linux servers use this solution? I mean, can we back up Windows and Linux servers? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, we, it looks like yeah. a, a partner a customer has, do you have to use Nutanix storage? You don't have to, but that would be more of the 9000 and X series regular appliances, correct? Right, if, if they don't want to use, if they don't want to um, take advantage of, you know, the Nutanix um, objects platform, then, it would, then they would be looking, obviously, at one of our other, um, like our 9,000 series appliances, right? Okay. Awesome. Um, so, you. yeah, no. So one of, the, one of the reasons we partnered with Sophos was, again, it's a proactive approach to protecting that backup and recovery environment, making sure that your backup and recovery environment is available in case you need to uh, re recover from ransomware, right? And so, like I said, we've had a relationship with Sophos going on, I think it's a little over three years. Um, we include it with every appliance, uh, UDP appliance we sell. We also include it with every copy of UDP software that we sell. So as long as you're under maintenance um, with us from a software perspective or from a hard, uh, you know, appliance perspective, as long as you're under current maintenance with ArcServe, we, we uh, cover the, the licensing for Sophos, right? Um, if you're a Sophos customer, you can add this node right into your Sophos Enterprise Console and manage it from there, right? You can manage the, so the Sophos uh, piece of it from your Enterprise Console. One of the reasons that we chose Sophos, again, was things like their deep learning neural network. The cool thing is they do have, you know, subscriptions for the, the, the you know, different profiles to download, but it's, it's not dependent on, you know, on those downloads, right? It learns as it goes, but also as exploit prevention, right? So we're not just, you know, it's, it's not a thing where we're looking at data. It's, it's we're actually protecting the environment and the server itself. And if the server is, um, if there's an attempt to take over that server or an attempt to impact that server, there's things like root cause analysis that 
you can go back and take a look and see uh, where those attempts were made. Things like crypt crypto guard and white guard, which you know protect the boot sector, the boot record, everything around um, making sure that that server is up and viable in the case of a ransomware attack. So the thing to remember from a you know from a you know, product perspective here is we've taken this we've created a single solution from a single vendor ArcServe right so we've taken these best of breed technologies right UDP think of all the good things that UDP does think about the success we've had with UDP think about the robustness of that and also think about um, the the vast number of workloads and platforms that it protects right a lot of legacy stuff that some of our competition doesn't protect anymore no longer protects not only legacy workloads but OS's and things like that right um, we still have the ability to use assured recovery right so if a customer wants to use assured recovery and be, be able to write RPO RTO and SLA validation to audit logs things like that we still have that um, as part of the solution in the end series and disaster recovery we've had you know on, we're running on top of Nutanix high availability hyperscale design unlimited scalability right? and again Sophos right? proactive protection of that backup and recovery environment so again we're, you know the solution is dress, addressing our two key challenges that we see with our customers today which is explosive data growth and how to protect that data in a cost-effective manner right and also cybersecurity. How can I make sure that I'm protecting my backup and recovery environment so that it's available in case of um, a ransomware attack, right? And again, single vendor, single solution, um, and single licensing model, right? Um, and that question before was uh, that asked was interesting was, um, do you need to be, you know? A, a Nutanix certified reseller to sell it? No, absolutely not. Now, Nutanix can sell the solution. Any of our um, ArcServe uh, resellers can sell the solution. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little, deep, uh, a little bit more detail in a minute. The, the cool thing is that the, the, from a reseller perspective and talking to other partners online here, it, it's simple to sell and it's simple for the customer to buy. We license it by capacity. And I'll, and I'll show you in the next slide. We sell it on capacity, right? So some of our competition in this space, in a, in a new tax environment, some of the licensing is by um, how many workloads you're backing up, how many VMs, the types of workloads. It makes the licensing a little bit more convoluted. We sell this strictly by capacity, right? So in other words, the customer just needs to buy the right size um, appliance and the right number of um, nodes for the cluster to address their capacity needs. Very, very simple. It's simple for the customer to understand what they're buying. It's simple for our resellers to sell, right? And keep in mind that, you know, when, when we're sizing these things, to, um, you know, keep in mind that we're backing up everything in that environment, right? So um, obviously we can help our resellers and our partners size these for the customer environments, but we're gonna take into account not only what they have under management with um, Nutanix in their environment, but all the other um, you know, data sources that they need to protect as well. And you know, customers can get into the solution you know, um, at, a, at, a, at you know, very, really at what I would call a mid-market type of capacity, 40 terabytes, right? We have a lot of customers in the mid-market, even small customers that have 40 terabytes of data. So the smallest, the smallest um, node to start out with is 40 terabytes. And if you see here under usable storage, 40, 80, 160, and 240 are the starting points, right? And then obviously over on the uh, right-hand side where it says scale out per node, those those are the nodes that can be added as, as you scale out, right? So a customer as small as 40 terabytes um, can get into the solution and um, scale out from there, right? So if, if a customer comes to me and says, well, you know, we've got about, you know, 38 terabytes of, of data, you might look at a, a 40 terabyte model and scale out after that. Or if a customer says, hey, we have 150 terabytes of data, then they're, they're gonna wanna start out maybe the N1400-4 at 160 terabytes and, and scale out from there, right? So if you look at the smaller, the smaller capacities, those are basically four virtual nodes on a single, 
um, physical unit. Whereas once you get into the larger boxes, it is an actual um, four node cluster, right? Four physical node cluster and they scale up from there. But again, the, the great thing about Nutanix is that um, it is cloud-like scalability, right? We see customers with hundreds and hundreds of nodes per cluster. And for our partners here, you know, some of the advantages here, again, single vendor, right? And, and no one else is doing this in the um, Nutanix environment, right? This is, a, this is a relationship we've had with Nutanix for about four years. Um, and this was a solution that we designed um, with them, right? And we're going to market together, obviously, both ArcServe and, and Nutanix. Um, we're the only ones doing it on a, on a, a single solution with a single vendor SKU today, right? And think about it, it's hyper-converged data protection with cybersecurity. Um, again, easy to sell single SKU for hardware and software, basically sold on a capacity and that's it. Single point of contact for not only things like vendor management, licensing management, support, all that. It's a single call to, to ArcServe. And again, it, as, as you, if you're in the field, uh, the folks at Nutanix, they get comped on this as well, right? So work hand in hand. If you're if you're if you're working in it with a Nutanix uh, field sales, work hand in hand with them. Everyone's going to get compensated on the solution. And for our partners out there, your typical discounts apply to this solution as well, right? And things like deal reg, right? So this, this is basically um, an appliance solution from us. Your discounts are gonna be the same whether you're silver, gold, or platinum, right? Whatever you have for a discount will apply today and deal, deal reg applies as well, right? Hey, Mark, uh, another quick question. So what's the difference between, I guess, the N-Series, and we have a couple people that are familiar with our OneSafe immutable storage. Um, so you mentioned immutability with Nutanix, the N-Series appliance. What's the, I guess, what's the difference uh, between the two? I, I, the, the difference between the two, I would say, is scalability, right? Um, our OneSafe is a great solution, uh, but it does not have the you know basically unlimited or cloud-like scalability that Nutanix Objects does today, right? So for a customer that has maybe doesn't have that kind of growth or maybe has more predictable growth, um, you know maybe a 9,000 series and a, and a uh, 9,000 series appliance along with a one safe or something like that would be a good solution. But if you have a larger customer that has um, really, really aggressive growth in their data environment. Maybe they're in an M&A situation, they're acquiring a company they don't know. They, the, it's harder for them to predict that growth, right? Um, then, you, then you'd be looking at uh, the end series. Okay, I think perfect, that, thank you, Mark. Yeah, absolutely. And keep in mind, deal reg, right? Um, we, we still pay, um, Hundred dollars for every approved deal, right? And two fifty for every approved new logo deal for our partners. So, Will, I'm going to turn it back over to you because, according to this slide here, it's Traeger time, which means you're going to ask a question, and we're going to have a scramble for the answer, and someone's going to win a Traeger. Yes, it's Traeger time. Hey, gone. Give me one second, guys. Will? Sorry, sorry, here, here I am, ready? Uh, here's a question. So 
what two customer challenges does the N series appliance solve for? Again, open up your questions pane and the cor correct answer wins the Traeger. Again, that question is what two customer challenges does the N series appliance solve for? The two that we focus on, right? The two that we focus on, uh, data backup and data protection. So that's half right, Stephen, um, we're close. Uh, anybody else? Let's see, we're trickling in here. Data growth and ransomware protection, that is Bingo. What do, what do you think? I, I, cybersecurity was what we're going for, but ransomware, you think the same thing, Mark? Yep, absolutely. All right. I think, that, I think they're spot on. Who was that? Awesome. Yeah, there we go. So um, I, I apologize if I butcher your name, uh, Shinji, uh, but I will be reaching out to you uh, via email and to get your address for the Traeger and or if you prefer a gift card, we could do that as well. But we will... Um, I, we'll get that out to you and I'll reach out to you later today. Um, but with that being said, I think that concludes our presentation and we'll hang on for another minute or two if anybody has any additional questions that they might yeah, want to ask. Yeah, feel free to ask any questions um, and uh, my contact will be in the follow-up. So if anyone has any questions or wants me to get involved in a partner opportunity or excuse me, an end user opportunity, I'd be glad to hop on a call or answer any questions or um, you know, get, getting our pre-sales folks involved, whatever it takes to, uh, you know, help you guys uh, move this out there. Let me know. Yeah, and and, and absolutely. And, and this call is recorded too. We'll send it out within the next 24 hours. So we'll send it to you guys and gals. Um, you know, you, got, you could send it out to your team, but we'll hang on for another 30 seconds to a minute to see if there's any other questions. Sorry, Miranda, little too, little too late. Okay, well, I think that um, I see no more questions coming in, but uh, I appreciate all of your time. Mark, thank you for your time as well. And um, we look forward to partnering with you and you'll see an email from us within the next 24 hours. And anything else, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a great afternoon, evening.